UI Composer Studio features tools that allow an artist to rapidly iterate on their designs and test on target hardware. In this example, we have a digital instrument cluster that was put together within Studio based on 3D assets brought in from other DCC tools such as Modo. Let's take a look at Studio's UI. First, we'll begin by looking at the Edit Project settings to establish our project specs. Under Edit Project Settings, we can adjust the width and height of our presentation. We can also change application settings globally for our preferences. Up along the top, we have our Edit Camera Views, our Playback Buttons to view animations within our Scene Timeline, Selection Tools, and Object Manipulation Tools to move, scale, and rotate objects within our scene. Over on the left, we have our Slides Palette, and at the bottom, we have our Scene Timeline. Similar to editing software, video editing software specifically, the timeline is composed of our scene, which includes everything in our presentation from 3D assets to images, buttons, behaviors, and lights and cameras. Over on the right, we have our project library. The project library contains all of the assets currently being used within the presentation. These assets can include anything from 3D mesh objects imported via Collada, or images, groups, layers, and even custom behaviors. The basic objects palette contains base primitives, group objects, layers, cameras, lights, text, and behaviors. The storage palette contains sample assets that are installed with Studio. And I tend to use these sample assets quite a bit from uh, project to project um, because they are readily available and they are so easy to add to my scene just by clicking on any of these sample assets and choosing add to library. So in this, uh, in this example, I'm, I want to add a specular reflection map to one of my round bezels in my instrument cluster. And they, this may not be the final reflection map that I want to use in my scene or my presentation. However, it's a good start and it kind of gives me a feel for what my concept is uh, evolving into or uh, starting to look like. And so if I choose the round bezel 3D mesh um, underneath the uh, 3D components layer in my timeline, you'll notice that there's a material called glossy associated with it. And with that glossy material selected in my timeline, and if I go over to the inspector palette, there's a specular reflection channel which currently is unassigned. Um, it does not have any kind of texture map assigned to it. So if I click on it, it will uh, come up with a pop-up menu showing all of the texture map images that are available within my project library. And none of these I particularly want to use as a reflection map, so I want to load one from the sap sample assets folder. And if I choose, say, Specular Dull 2 or Specular Shining 3, all I need to do is click on Add to Library and then go over to the Library Palette and you'll notice that it is already highlighted indicating that that was the one I just added to, uh, to my project library. And it's not added to my scene yet, so what I need to do is select the material on the round bezel 3D mesh and then go over to the Inspector Palette and under the Specular Reflection uh, channel on the pop-up um, then I'll choose Specular Shiny 3 from this list. And as you'll see in the viewport, um, it's uh, now visible. And I can also select the map within the timeline now that I've added it to the scene and adjust its UV rotation just to kind of get a different angle or a different look on it and uh, until I'm happy with, with the results. So it's very easy to add assets from the sample assets folder. Um, you can add behaviors. Uh, but I tend to use the uh, the alpha maps and the specularity maps fairly fairly often. So I briefly touched on the inspector palette, uh, but I want to go into a little more detail about what it is. And it's essentially a, a list of basic properties on any object within my presentation, including slides. Uh, so it, as an example, I currently have a texture map selected in my timeline. So I have a readout of basic properties for this texture map so I can adjust its 
U and V repeat. Um, I can uh, tell it to be a UV mapped texture or an environmentally mapped texture for reflections. Uh, I can adjust it uh, its tiling. I can have it be a tiled texture map or I can have it stretch with no tiling. I can change its UV rotation, its U and V positions, um, and so forth. The uh, glossy material here that I have selected has its own set of basic properties. Um, I can change the lighting mode from vertex to pixel. If I include a normal map on this material, I definitely want to change it to pixel here. Um, blending mode, I can change that to screen or multiplier overlay. Uh, diffuse color is pretty straightforward. I can change to whatever color I want um, or even add a custom color with a specific RGB value. Um, diffuse map, I can add a diffuse map. Specular map, as we've seen earlier. Opacity map. Um, the emissive power, so if I move the slider to 100%, the uh, object basically turns into a light bulb. Um, you can also add a control map to uh, control the emissive map uh, to be um, really bright in certain areas and not in others, so like a lava surface. Um, and uh, you can also add a normal map um, here as well. And uh, selecting the 3D mesh object in my timeline, we have our basic position, rotation, scale, pivot, and opacity properties, uh, same as on our group as well. Uh, selecting the light within our layer, I can choose to have the light be a point light or a directional light. Uh, I can adjust its rotation. I can change the color of the light. Um, and as you notice, there's these uh, stopwatch icons next to a lot of these properties, and that's the animate toggle. So anytime uh, if I have the playhead set to say one second or wherever the playhead happens to be in my timeline uh, or that I set it to be, uh, I could check any of these animate toggles on in the basic parameters or basic properties palette and set a keyframe at that particular point in time um, on any of these objects that have um, that capability. So on a camera, looks like all of the properties on the inspector palette can be animatable. On the material, you can animate a diffuse color over time or position, rotation, and scale on an object. Um, the camera, you can adjust the field of view if you'd like, uh, and so forth. Um, selecting a slide within my scene, you'll notice that the inspector palette gives you the option to choose a play mode. So if I have this slide selected and during a, a preview or during runtime, the playhead reaches the end of my timeline, I want it to do something. If I don't want it to do anything, I can select uh, stop at end, uh, just choose the stop at end play mode, and uh, nothing will happen. It'll just stay there on that slide. However, if I want the uh, slide to play through to another slide, I can choose the play through to play mode, and then choose either next or previous or any other slide within my scene that I've created. And if I select a layer in my scene, uh, we have the ability to turn on progressive AA, uh, progressive anti-aliasing. And currently, the uh, gauges layer has progressive AA turned off because there's constant motion and progressive AA will never activate. Um, it only activates on layers where there may be motion, but once all the motion stops or rests, uh, progressive AA will kick in to blur aliased lines and render a beautiful image for you and even store it in uh, system memory and so you get a nice performance boost. Um, and you can turn it on by selecting the layer, going to the inspector palette and choosing um, whatever uh, progressive AA setting you want. I typically bring it all the way up to eight times progressive AA um, without any problems. And one caveat is you'll only see this effect on the target device. You won't see this on a PC preview.